If there was ever an anime or manga that was ripe for a Dynasty Warriors game treatment, it's Berserk. The legendary 100 Man Slayer's gruesome story translates well into an action game about hack and slash murder sprees, and wielding his giant hunk of iron in Berserk and the Band of the Hawk felt powerful and satisfying until it got a little too simple and repetitive. After I got over Band of the Hawk's inexplicable lack of co-op, I jumped into the lonely single-player action gameplay. Like the rest of Dynasty Warriors' many spin-offs, it's easy to grasp and superficially satisfying, especially when performing specials in the form of death blows to eradicate entire swarms of enemies in explosive displays of blood and guts. Taking control of Guts, the epitome of badassery, was a treat for me as a Berserk fan, and that basic loop of racing to fill the frenzy meter and unleashing unstoppable fury upon foes took longer to get old than it had any right to. But the too simple two-button combo system left me wanting more, especially when I discovered that the same simple strategy works just as well against most bosses as it does against hordes. I would have loved to experiment more with Griffith's impossibly quick saber or Shirk's hard-hitting AoE magic, but out of 46 story mode missions lasting a total of around 20 hours, only 5 let you choose a character besides Guts. So there's really no variety to be found besides the extra combo finishers and sub-weapons that are unlocked as you level up. That's partly because the mechanics that are there aren't really used. You're capable of guarding and dodging, but I rarely needed to do either unless I was up against a boss. But most of those are surrounded by minions, which made it much too easy to quickly fill up the frenzy and death blow gauges for massive damage. Nosferatu Zod stood out as a challenge because he fights alone. So I cranked up the difficulty, but even then, Band of the Hawk barely put up a fight, and for some reason it rewarded me absolutely absurd amounts of experience, basically power leveling. So most of Band of the Hawk is a pushover, but there is one boss fight that spikes frustratingly hard in the other direction, even on normal mode. It was so mind-numbingly crushing that I could only beat it by cheesing. Actually, I really can't tell if I even was cheesing or if my method was what Berserk and the Band of the Hawk intended. Yes, I'm still salty. On the other hand, I thoroughly enjoyed the unexpected accessory customization system, which I spent a lot of time tinkering with. These customized accessories can be equipped with skills from a list of dozens, and it felt great to modify an item, level it up, and feel an immediate difference on the battlefield. These accessories can even be used in free mode and endless eclipse mode, both of which allow you to freely choose any unlocked character. Free mode lets you replay any story mission you've already done, but there wasn't enough to get me to replay. Endless Eclipse mode is where you'll unlock more things of interest, like warhorses and outfits, and a special character. It's quite repetitive, but at least it's difficult because the enemies gain health and hit harder the deeper into the 100 level abyss you go, and you don't regain health. Finally, a challenge! As for the story, Berserk and the Band of the Hawk pulls directly from its acclaimed source material, and it's actually not a bad way to start if you've never read or watched anything Berserk related before. It starts with the Golden Age arc and the beginning of Guts' story, and includes nearly two hours of anime footage. It even expands on that arc extensively with more scenes, events, and mid-mission conversation, which is unfortunately all in Japanese with no English option other than subtitles. Even so, I learned more about Guts' world by playing this game than I did by rewatching the movies for sure. Berserk and the Band of the Hawk is mindlessly repetitive, but its combat is still somehow addictive enough to be an enjoyable action game with a dark fantasy story that stays true to its source, most suitable for fans of Berserk. It even left me craving to try out new characters in Endless Abyss mode. For all things Berserk and Band of the Hawk, stick with IGN.